All right, section 5.1 is exponential functions. You guys have seen exponential functions before. Why is this an exponential function? It has an exponent. What is the exponent? An x. An exponential function has a base. A is our base. It's our bigger number. And then the exponent is a variable. It says where a is greater than, one, than 0. What does that mean? A is greater than zero. It's bigger than, it's positive, right? If you'll see in a second, we'll talk about this. If you have like negative three X, that negative doesn't mean it's a negative three. That has to do with a transformation. What does a negative out in front mean? A, fl a reflection. So it's not that it's negative three. It's the absolute value of A. And it says A is not 1, so your base will never be the number 1. Okay, that's an exponential function. An exponential function has a variable in the exponent. All right, if I had like x squared, that's not an exponential function. That's quadratic. x cubed has an exponent, but that's not exponential. It's cubic. If I had x or, I'll use a different letter. If I had 4 to the x power, that's an exponential function. Does everybody understand the difference? If you're going to evaluate, if you have a calculator, appreciate it if you could get it out. <clears throat> if not, I have mine here so you can go through. But you guys, obviously with stuff like this, you're going to have to be able to use your calculator. So if I'm plugging in, I want to know f of 2. What am I plugging 2 in yeah. to the x? So this is really 3 squared, which is what? 9. 9. Okay. Here, what am I plugging in for x? Negative 2 over 3. So I would have 3 to the negative 2 over 3 power. In your calculators, there is a button that is called a caret. It's usually right around the pi button. Looks like the top of an arrow. That's how you raise. So you would put, type in 3, then hit the caret, and then in parentheses put negative 2 divided by 3. You can hit divided by 3. What is it? 0 0.037. You guys agree? Okay, hang on. Let's look at it. Did you put negative, Borja? Yeah, not the minus sign. Three carat, and then we have two divided by three. I got 0.481. Okay, Borja, I'm glad you did that. Borja put it in his calculator like this. 3 to the negative 2 divided by 3. So what his calculator did was raise it to the negative 2 power, then divide it by 3. You have to put it in parentheses. Always put your exponents in parentheses. So when you do that again, you got point... What is it? 4801 or 4... So 481, we'll say. Something like that. And I'll tell you what's around to. But make sure you put it in parentheses. Good. All right, what about this? What am I putting in for? Pi. So I would say 3, hit the caret button, whoops, and put in? 31.5. Pi. Uh, uh, 31.544. 31.544, something like that. Okay, good. And then here, what am I putting in? So put it in just like that. 3. Raise it to, to put hit second x squared. The radicals should come up, and then close your parentheses. Yep. Uh, gonna be, uh, um, what is it? The yes. Four point seven two eight. Perfect. 4.729, nine, something like that. Two eight. Two eight. Good. All right. So we understand how to evaluate. When they say f of something, that's telling you here's the number to plug in for x. We good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. All right. Here, when you graph. You guys are going to notice something. Do you see these two functions right here? Yeah, you guys have done this. Yep. There's something called an exponential growth, and there's something called an exponential decay. What do you think a growth does? It goes up. From left to right, how we read our graph, it grows. If I have an exponential decay, what do you think it does? It goes downwards. From left to right, it goes down like this. So why do you think the one on the left is a growth and the one on the right is a decay? Perfect. If you have a whole number base, you will have a growth. If you have a fractional base that is between 0 and 1, 4 thirds. Is 4 thirds yes. less than 1? No. no. Just because it's a fraction, don't be like, oh, it's a decay. 
if the number is between 0 and 1, then it's going to be a decay. Do you guys see that? All right, so if I was going to, <clears throat> if I was going to graph this, let's just practice with our calculators. I'm going to tell you to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 to both of them. You so, uh, yeah. So in your calculator, guys, do two, 3 to the negative 2 power. What do you get? Negative 9. I mean 9. I mean 9. Uh, Wait, what? Do it. Parenthesis. Do it. Do 3 caret parenthesis negative 2. So you would go three and then hit that carrot button. Uh, yeah. I got zero point one one. Zero point one one one. Okay, look on your calculators. Do you one see an one. F to D button? Right there. Oh, yeah. Hit second, F to D. It'll change it to a fraction for you. Okay. What is it? Oh fast. Oh, what is it? Wow. Did I just blow your mind right now? Yeah. Most calculators have it. If you don't see it, I'll show you it. I like six people look for it. That's okay. That's okay. All right, let's do the second one. Let's evaluate. Three to the negative one. PRB. Second PRB. Yeah. What's three to the negative one? One third. One third. All right, so then I have three to the zero power. What's anything to the zero power? One. One. What's three to the first power? Three. three. What's three to the second power? Nine. Nine. Do you see how your numbers are doing what? Getting bigger. They're getting bigger, right? They're increasing. <clears throat> so if we go on the other side and we evaluate, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to say, okay, this time it's one-third, so put one divided by three in parentheses. That's a bad color. One-third to the negative two. What do you get? Nine. Yeah. What'd y'all get? Nine. Positive nine. All right, so now I'm going to do one-third to the negative one. Three. Three. One-third to the zero is one. one, good. One third to the first power is one third. one third, good. One third to the second power is one ninth. one ninth. Do you guys see? Look visually what happened. Our first one is a growth. As we plugged in our numbers, we went one ninth, one third, one, three, and nine. The other one was a decay. So watch, if I graph this in the black, we're gonna do the black first. Negative two, one ninth. So about here. At negative one, we had one third, right? At zero, we had one. And then at one, we had three. And then at, whoops, my bad. You saw when we did it, the Y? Well, they, yeah, because I gave you the X to plug in. Ay, ay, ay. Hold on. Yep. I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so at 1, we're at 3. And then at 2, we're all the way up here at 9. So an exponential function, watch how I draw it. Do you see how it starts off slow and it gets quick, it gets big in a hurry? If something grows exponentially, it grows quickly. Yeah. Look how I drew this. What did I get really, really, really close to, but I didn't touch it? Zero. That's our asymptote. That's the line that it gets really, really, really close to, but doesn't touch. So if I'm going to graph my second one, my one-third to the x power, at negative 2, I was at where? 9? And then at negative 1, I was at 3. And then I was at 1. And then I was at one-third. And then I was at one-ninth. Do you guys see how that's a dk? We always read graphs from left to right. So if I put my finger on the black graph and I went from the left to right and I followed it, it would go up. If I put my finger on the blue graph on the left and I follow it, it goes down. You guys see that? Okay, good. Yes. Why is this a DK? Why, but why? How did I know that when I first looked at it? It's between zero and one. And this is a growth because it's bigger than one. Okay, good. Very good. All right, this is just showing you. Do you see how here we have 2 to the x? So this would be the dk of it would be 1 half. You guys see that? This is showing you how the graphs go. Where do they all meet? At 1. You guys see that? They're always going to have that. If they don't move anywhere down, they're going to start at 1. <clears throat> all right, so what I just talked to you about is growth and decay. 
This is a parent function. We're going to talk about moving them left, right, up, down, that sort of thing. But for the parent function, your domain, all the letters that you, are, sorry, all the numbers that you can use, all real numbers, your domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. I can put anything I want in. I can put a positive exponent, put a negative exponent, I'll get an answer. But your range is from what to what? What does it get really close to on the Y but doesn't touch? Zero to infinity. Does it include zero? No. Are there ones where you're going to get an asymptote or something? Yeah, if you move it up or down or left or right, but just the parent function. Yep. Okay, so here they say figure out the, the function. They're figuring out what A is, right? So what here, what did I plug in for A, for X? What value did I plug in for X? What's the X value of the ordered pair, guys? Two. Two. And what did I get out for the Y? 25. 25. So watch, you gotta know how to solve an equation. If I wanted to get A all by itself, what would I do? Take the square root. A equals what? Right, we're gonna go with just positive because if it's negative, that means it would be a reflection. We'll talk about that later. All right, so here, A to what power? What's the X value that they gave me? No, right here. Three. And when I did that, what did I get out? What's the Y? One eighth. Well, hmm. Hmm. What do you notice about one eighth in compared to twenty five? It's smaller. It is. Well, how? What kind of a smaller? It's a fraction. Guys, when you see something like this, when you raise something to a power and you get a fractional answer, you should think negative exponent. That's a good little hint. What number, think about this, what number times itself three times would give me eight? Two. Two, right? So if I had two to the third power, I get eight. Well, I don't want eight, I want one eighth. So what do you think my answer is? One half. I like your thought of one half. What's two, guys, in your calculator, what's two to the negative third power? One eighth. One eighth, yes? Do me a favor, what's one half to the third power? One eighth. One eighth. Good, Hayden. Yeah. So you guys could write that either way. You guys could write that either way, but when you think of, of fractional answers, negative exponents. When you have fractional bases, negative exponents. That's what I want you guys to see, that relationship. Good job, Hayden. All right, we don't have to graph these right this second. We'll talk about graphing later. I want you guys to focus on this. What is this function? Is this a cubic, a linear? What is this? Nope. What is this? What is this kind of a function? This is an exponential function. If I had 2 to the x power, and I moved that 1 to the end, I just had a plus 1. What does that mean? Where does this function, here's my function, where did it move? Okay, it moved where? It moved up 1. Guys, this is a vertical shift. Up. One, you guys know that. If I had x squared plus one, you guys would tell me, oh, plus one, goes up one. You isolate your function and see where it moves. And we'll talk about graphing later. We have to do it right now. What about this one? Here's my function. Agreed? There's my function, isolate it. There's a negative where? Out in front or inside the x? Out in front, when we have a negative outside in front, it's a reflection over what? Over the x, good. Our normal, 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 normal kinds of transformations is exactly what this is going through. Yes? 
Do not airdrop me anything. I said do not <laughs> airdrop no, me anything. Please no. Look, here's my function. How is this different? Where is the minus one? It's up in the exponent with the x. When we had something like 2 times x minus 1, what did that minus 1 mean? Um, when it was inside the x with the parentheses. Left and right. Good. So in the exponent, guys, is going to move it left or right. Is it going to move it the way that we think it is or the opposite? So this way is going to move which way? Right. How many spaces? One. You guys see that? If it said 2 to the x minus 1, where does that move? No, if it said 2 to the x minus 1, what does that mean? How are these two things different? Correct. This is a vertical shift when it's behind. When it's in the exponent, it's left and right. Good, Matt. All right, last thing I want to talk about is the interest formula. You guys need to know this interest formula. I, you guys have heard this before. If something is compounded quarterly, semi-annually, something like that, okay? <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to give you this formula or not, so I would go ahead and, and try to memorize it. P is your principal. That's the amount that you start with, okay? Principal means the amount you start with, okay? Then I have T is amount after years, okay? Time. Interest rate per year, the R. Guys, an interest rate, most of you have cars. You talk about 4.9% APR. 4.9%, is that a decimal? Nope. 4.9%, if I said you had 4.9%, that's a percentage. How do I change that to a decimal? You got to move it over too. Just because there's a decimal point in it, if there's a percentage sign behind it, you have to move the decimal. So remember, when you get your interest, it has to be in decimal form. So you're going to have to do that every time. N is the number of times the interest is compounded. N is the number of times the interest is compounded per year. You guys are going to get to know some words. <laughs> All right, so let's go over some words. Let's go over some words. If I say yearly, how many times does something happen if it happens yearly? Once. Once. If I say semi-annually, I think I spelled that wrong. Semi-circle. Semi-finals. How many times does that happen semi-annually? How many times a year? Two. Two times a year. Good. If I say something happens monthly, what is monthly? 12. 12, good. If I say something happens quarterly, you guys need to know what these words mean. Okay, I agree with point twenty five. I see what you're saying there, but in terms of a year, how many quarters are there in a year? How many quarters are there in football? How many quarters are there in basketball? Four, good. If I said something happens... another one why can't I think daily 365 if I said something happened weekly 52 52 you guys need to know that because you're gonna have problems on your quiz and it says a certain sum of blah 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 all right, last one. Let's look. Let's look. Here's your formula. Let's identify all the stuff we need. A thousand dollars is invested. What is that? What letter is that? If it's a thousand dollars? No, 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 no. In my formula, what is what is a thousand? Principal. That's the principal. So P equals a thousand. Now I look through and I invest at an interest rate of twelve percent. What is that? What letter is that? Is that my rate? Is that, we already did principal. That's my R, okay? So R equals 12%. But I told you guys, I can't use a percentage. I have to have a decimal. So that would be what as a decimal? 0.12, good. Find the amounts after how many years? Three years. So my T, the time that I'm talking about, T, is three years. Everybody agree? 
Okay, so find the amount after three years, and I'm compounding it different ways. Do you see what's going to change every time I do this? What letter is going to change every time? The N. Guys, here's a little hint. When you do this, if you start off with $1,000, right? When you work this out with all these different kinds of compounding, your answers should be all around the same. They're not going to be exactly the same because you're compounding it differently, but you shouldn't get like $2,000 and then $25 million. You got to make sure you understand how to put this in your calculator. This is what's going to get us the most. Let's look at our formula. Interest equals, so let's do it for annually. My P is 1,000, right? Yes? Yeah. Okay, then I have in the formula, one plus, what is my interest rate? 0.12 over, what's my N if I'm going annually? One. one. And I'm gonna raise that to the N times T. So what's my N again? One times my T is three. Now, let's see if we can do this in our calculator. There's a lot going on in this problem. Get your calculator up and try this. I would put in, listen to me, 1,000, parenthesis, one plus parenthesis. One plus parenthesis? Yep. Point one two divided by one. Yes, put that in. Then hit close parenthesis, close parenthesis. Because oh, okay. you have to close this parenthesis around here and close the whole parenthesis. And then you hit the caret button and you raise it to the third power. Nobody's changing. Okay, now on the count of three, everybody say it. One, two, three. 1, 4, 4, 4, 4. Yes, good. So annually, it's four one thousand four hundred four dollars and ninety three cents. Guys, this is money, so don't write point nine two eight seven six. But, but don't do that. All right, so now if I'm going to find semi annually, guys, we're going to do the exact same thing. Still have a thousand dollars I started off with. I have one plus, but instead of 0.2 divided by one, I'm gonna do 0.2 divided by, divided by what? Two. two. And then I raise it to the N times T. What is N times T? What is, what is our time? Three years, yes? Guys, come on, what is, what is our time? Three years, and what is our N value? So I'm raising it to the sixth power. So let's do that in your calculator. Everybody with me? Borja, come on. 1,000, parenthesis, 1 plus, parenthesis, 0.12, divided by 2, parenthesis, parenthesis, and then raise that to the sixth power. 1,000. 1, 418 point like 52 make sense yeah okay let's do it again now quarterly i still plug in a thousand ryan you with me yes okay and then i have one plus point one two what's my n this time four quarterly right so four and then i'm going to raise that to the n times t well in this case i have three times four which is so raise it to the 12th power. So let's try it in our calculators. 1,000, parenthesis, 1 plus, parenthesis, 0. 0.12 divided by 4, parenthesis, parenthesis. Raise that to the 12th power. Perfect. Good job. $1,425.76. This is not difficult. You just have to be really careful how you put, plug it in. So here, if I have 1,000 again, 1 plus, I have 0. 0.12. This time I'm dividing by what number? 12. 12, good. And then I'm going to raise this to the 3 times 12, which is? 36. 36, okay. So 1,000 parenthesis, 1 plus, parenthesis, just, just redo it. Don't try and go back and fix it, just redo it. What are we getting? Uh, 
$1,430.77. Good. And then the last one. I say 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 365, right? And then I raise that to the n times t. What's 365 times 3? 1095, good. So 1,000. What do we get? Very good. 1433.24. What do you notice about all of these values? It does go higher, but by a lot. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is when you do these problems and you have to compound all these different ways, your answer should be about the same. If you hit a keystroke wrong, if you forget a decimal point, it's going to drastically change your answer. So just make sure you guys are paying attention to what you're doing. Sound good? All right, good job.